Um, this protest is about our lives. Um, since independence, we have budgets in this country. Every year, we as citizens, through our taxes, uh, we give you know millions and billions of dollars to the government to manage in order to improve our living conditions, to create opportunities for us. Uh, but we are 52 years, um, poverty has increased, cost of living is unbearable, delivery of public services, you know, are erratic, expensive, and poor. But every year we have a budget. So it appears our budgets only help to produce poverty. Our budgets only help to make people who occupy public offices, particularly at the highest levels, to have better living conditions and better welfare, whilst the majority of the people from whom the budget comes, who are the owners of the budget and the owners of those public uh, offices, uh, live in terrible living conditions. You just go to Banjul here. This is the capital of the Gambia. Um, the conditions in Banjul is, uh, uh, I mean, are unacceptable, they are inexcusable. The only reason Banjul is so dilapidated is because our budgets have been mismanaged. Uh, and this budget continues to increase every year. Last year, I mean 2018, the budget was 18 billion. Uh, 2019, the budget is now 25 billion. But what has changed in the lives of Gambians in these past two years? As a Gambian citizen living here, I have seen no improvement in my life as a budget contributor. Other than that I know my cost of living, my dowel at home has increased. I know what I pay for electricity has increased. I know what I pay for uh, school fees for the education of my children has increased. I know what I pay for health has increased. And every year in my salary, I see income tax. So, so the budget I give, my neighborhood, my street remains dusty. When it rains, I cannot pass through to go home. I have no uh, electricity supply, no street lights on my street. So, why am I paying tax? What does this budget mean for me? So I think this is the question each and every Gambian need to ask yourself. Why are you paying budget? But we know in that budget is where we are paying a president $175,000 per, per month. 2019, that has been increased to $255,000. We know out of this budget, uh, public officials have been traveling around the world. What do they bring back? You know, the president charters a flight, takes tens of people to a, an international conference at the UN when he could have taken only five people. Because we have a, a Gambian mission in New York. We have a Gambian embassy in Washington. So we don't need to take that number of people. We see uh, the blatant, you know, I mean, lavish spending of our money. So how much is allocated for the president's office, if you know? In 2019, what's allocated in the president's office is six, almost $650 million. I don't see any justification for that because the president's office is the, is the highest office in the country, yes. But the president's office does not build schools. The president's office does not build hospitals. The president's office does not build roads. It doesn't deliver goods and services because the president has um, other executive institutions and ministries responsible for those things. So how can you give $650 million to the office of the president? That means you are just giving the president money 
to go and hire any kind of person to pay out them for free, like these advisors. They are paying advisors two million, six advisors. The president has a parliament. The, one of the functions of the parliament is to advise. The president has a cabinet. One of the functions of the cabinet is to advise him. The president has other institutions, state institutions, even civil society, even private sector. He can call Gambia Chamber of Commerce, come and advise me on this matter. On top of that, you go and hire six, another six people to advise you, and you pay them two million. And so far, the people they see, we have seen that they are, these are the advisors. You know, these people, they are not ad, uh, appointed as advisors because they have the capacity, the knowledge or the skills. It's simply because it, they are political allies. They are just cronies. So it's just people hired to be rewarded. $650 million. How can Finance Minister Mamburenjai defend that? to give one of his $650 million. Why? Khalifa Salah argued to say that the manner that you people organize your protest, you would have go to the National Assembly, listen to the proceedings, engage them, you know, for a debate, then you can come up with whatever grievance that you people have. Well, I haven't listened to Halifa exactly, so I don't know whether you are interpreting him correctly. Yeah, but you know, we, we, we cannot, citizens cannot go to the parliament to debate when sessions are going on. Only speakers, I mean, parliamentarians speak. Uh, but citizens go to the. Go and listen to their yeah, but debate. citizens go and listen. Uh, there are a number of now citizens who go and live stream. So nothing is happening in the parliament that citizens don't know. This is why we are here. We know. You know? Um, you see. There is no universal or correct or wrong approach as far as citizens can manifest. So one can disagree with the manner this protest is done, can say it's poorly organized, can be better organized. Certainly it can be better organized. But let citizens act. And it is for them also as MPs who hear, who know that citizens are doing this to support those citizens' views those citizen action to support it. So I would expect Halifa and all of those in the parliament would tell the finance minister, would tell the IGP that it is wrong for you to send armed riot police uh, just because citizens want to show their disagreement. You know, so um, I, I think what is important is not to um, begin to focus on the faults or, you know, uh, all of those things. No. Let, let's see how do we strengthen support each other. So what next from here? Now that you people are, these people are denied to get in, what next? Well, actually, people don't even have to get into the parliament. Uh, people don't even have to come here. Citizens can manifest anywhere they are in the Gambia, or even outside the Gambia. Uh, so what is happening for me is, is a huge success. Um, we have to understand the idea of Gambians engaging uh, the state in this manner it's not a common practice in this country. And the few times it has happened, it always turns bloody because the state acts with violence. But uh, citizens continue to engage this way. And so for me, uh, coming this far, two years ago, or less than two years ago, the first time uh, Occupy Westfield emerged in this country, we saw our citizens say, not in my name. Let's give them time. Let us be patient. But today, when this protest, I saw the announcement on social media, I've not seen yet any government say, let's give them time. There's no need to protest. So I think people are beginning to wake up to realize, ultimately, we cannot have progress and development in this country until we engage. Democracy will not work in the Gambia. And democracy doesn't work in any society where citizens don't engage. Look, France is one of the most advanced countries in the world. It's one of the most democratic countries in the world. They have a, hundreds of years of democratic culture. But the government made decisions, and citizens disagreed with the decision about fuel prices. For two weeks, citizens went on the street to protest. The French government try all means to derail it, to stop it, to discredit it. They cannot. Because people realize that France, the French people realize that France is ours. That the government of France is our government. That the seat of Emmanuel Macron is our seat. Eventually, 
the government had to succumb to answer to the will of the people, and that is democracy, the will of the people. So, can so, you say, Mali, that this uh, demonstration, I'm sorry, a uh, peaceful protest is a success? It's a see success. It's a success. You are here interviewing me. People are putting it on live stream. This is going to be education also for Gambians. Like I said, a few months ago, some people want to protest, and a lot of people came to attack them. They didn't know we are going to get to a day like today that we'll have a government, this government come with a scandalous budget like this, and on top of that, come with a scandalous supplementary budget. And so those people saying, when Occupy Westfield emerged, when Dafadoy emerged, they were saying, not in my name. Today they are all quiet, because they know now it has reached to them. But, so this is the success of this uh, protest. So that eventually, and maybe the success is still limited, we need to build up. Because what is important is, uh, these school children, for example, when we get to a point, they realize that this is in their, in their joint. When taxi drivers realize this is ours, they join. Market women, workers in the offices, even these parliamentary police, even if they are standing here, but in their hearts they know this is where we should be. Then democracy will come to the Gambia. So we are on a journey. All right? We are on a journey. And so for me, this is a success. We are, we are, we are building. Until we have those Gambians, our farmers, our teachers, our doctors. Because what is happening in the Gambia is uh, our problem, if there's any criticism to all the things we do, is lack of strategy, lack of organization. Because we still cannot make the collective see the issue together. So doctors were on strike here. People insulted them. See, people insulted them. But all Gambians should have joined those doctors. Teachers went on strike here, people insulted them. But all Gambians should have joined those teachers. So until we get to a point where when people get up for a national course like this, all Gambians join, our success will still be limited. But we are progressing. So for me, even if it ends right now, I'm satisfied. Yeah, that the Gambian government would know that never again will they present a decision, a budget, and then people would clap for them. No. But we will uh, scrutinize it. And so what this indicates is that the era has stopped in the Gambia where the government controls the narrative. In the past, when that APRC regime, when they issued statements, when they made their budget and so, full stop. They have the final word. But what is being shown right now in the Gambia, the government no more has the final word in the Gambia. No. If the government says something, Gambians get up and scrutinize what they say and, you know, investigate it, interrogate it, and then realize that it is all trash. That the government goes back to retract or change their position or come back with another crazy story. So that shows that the Gambia government no more controls the narrative. And that is where democracy prevails. Where the narrative is not controlled by the government, but by the people. So what we are doing is to control the narrative. Yes, that this budget 2019 is a scandalous, is a shameful, is a criminal budget. That the supplementary appropriation bill, 20 days to the end of the year, you are asking for one billion dollars. 20 days. That's criminal. So we are telling the Gambia government under Adam Barrow that his budget is nonsense. So the supplementary bill should be at the National Assembly? They should discuss it today, and I hope our members will reject it. I hope they will reject it, not just reject it, but they reject it with a serious condemnation, with a serious rebuke against the Minister of Finance for this irresponsible budget. Okay. That's, that's my point, yeah. Thank you. So I'm saying, Madi, they said the supplementary bill should be at the National Assembly uh, four months before the National Assembly could finally um, approve it. So, but others are arguing that I mean, it has been, uh, they, they brought it 10 days before uh, the end of the year. So, I mean, is that constitutional? No, I'm, I'm not sure uh, the four months mark is, 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 is correct. Um, I, I mean, I, I checked the constitution, I, I cannot find it. And maybe in the other acts, like the Finance and Audit Act, I'm, I'm not sure. But whether four months or 10 days, this supplementary budget is unjustified. Yes, I've gone through it, I've listened to the minister, and for me, 
more questions uh, what come to my mind than to see the truth, the solution in that speech and in that bill. So that bill for me should be rejected 100% with a rebuke of the minister for having the audacity to present us uh, such a criminal scandalous uh, uh, bill. So if the National Assembly go ahead to approve the budget, can we say it is a failure on their part to Ab see absolutely. a replica of uh, the German National Assembly? Absolutely. If the National Assembly approves the, this appropriation bill, this supplementary bill budget, it will be the height of irresponsibility and a betrayal of the people of the Gambia. And, and I think if they do, we the citizens of the Gambia should continue uh, to fight them, to make them realize that they have harmed us and to make them pay for it. So it should, we should continue. That's it.